Hello, my name is Megan Favalli. And I'm Alexandria Maley, and our mentor is Dr. Croxton. We became interested in looking at sexual assault on college campuses because it is a growing issue. We wanted to look at the different variables that affect the assignment of blame on individuals. It is clear from sexual assault research that the use of alcohol is increasing. When Koss surveyed a sample of college students who were involved in sexual assault, he discovered that 55% of the victims and 74% of the perpetrators were under the influence of alcohol. It has also been discovered that when drinking is involved, the victim is blamed more. Fogel found when both the male perpetrator and female victim were intoxicated, the female victim was held more responsible than the male for the incident. Another interesting study found that when substances were consumed willingly, the victim was assigned more blame and responsibility than when the substances consumed unwillingly. Stewart found that when both alcohol and marijuana were consumed by the victim willingly, the jurors found the plaintiff side less credible than when the victim consumed the substances unwillingly. Davies and Rogers found that younger children are seen as more vulnerable than older children and will receive more empathy. Therefore, we wondered how age would affect the assignment of blame to a victim of sexual assault. After doing a literature review that included these findings among others, we developed our own investigation. The purpose of our study was to determine how individuals perceive sexual assault as a function of the following variables, age of the victim, type of drug involved, and deception or no deception. We plan to study the impact of each of these variables both alone and when interacting with one another when assigning blame to a victim and perpetrator. We generated the following hypothesis. When the victim is 21 years old, she will receive more blame for the sexual assault than when the victim is 15 years old. We believe this because previous research has shown younger children are seen as more vulnerable and will receive more empathy than older children. The second hypothesis was the perpetrator will be held more responsible for the sexual assault when alcohol has been consumed rather than when marijuana is consumed. We predicted this because we felt that being intoxicated would be perceived as more debilitating than being high on marijuana. Our third hypothesis was when the victim is 21 years old, she will experience more self-blame over the incident than when the victim is 15 years old. We feel that the older victim will believe that she should be more aware of, her, of the warning signs in the situation. And our last hypothesis was the perpetrator will be blamed more for the act if deception is used than when no deception is used. We believe this because subjects will feel that using deception is a dishonest and immoral act. Overall, we had 97 participants, 17 which were male and 80 that were female. They were students of SUNY Fredonia's Introduction to Psychology courses and various upper-level psychology courses. All of them signed up for our study online, and they also received extra credit. All of them were all over the age of 18 years old. We had eight fictional sexual assault scenarios. An example of the scenario is... Susan is a 21-year-old female college student. Susan and her friends decided to go to a party on a Friday night at an off-campus location. A 21-year-old male college student, John, walked up to her and introduced himself. He offered her an alcoholic drink, and she accepted. The alcoholic drink was a punch which consisted of fruit juice and a variety of liquors. After about an hour of drinking and socializing with John, she was highly intoxicated. He led her upstairs, went into a private room, and sexually assaulted her. Each of these scenarios varied whether Susan was 15 years old or 21 years old, consuming alcohol or marijuana, and being deceived or not deceived. Following the scenarios was a nine-question questionnaire that represented our dependent variables. They were the assignment of blame and responsibility, perceptions of guilt, anger, and self-blame, and the empathy the subjects had toward the victim. Each participant was given an informed consent form, read the scenario, and the questionnaire. The scenarios were randomly assigned to the participants, and each student was given one out of the eight scenarios. And the design of our study was a 2 by 2 by 2 between groups design. The independent variables were age of victim, either 15 years or old or 21 years old, type of substance, alcohol or marijuana, and then deception or no deception. In our results, we found a number of significant findings, uh, significant effects. A significant effect meant that our p-value was less than 0.05. First significant effect had to do with the assignment of blame and perceptions of self-blame as a function of age. When the victim was 15 years old, she was blamed more for the incident than when the victim was 21 years old. We also found that when the victim was 15 years old, she was more inclined to self-blame herself than when the victim was 21 years old. Another significant effect had to do with the assignment of responsibility to the perpetrator as a function of type of drug. When marijuana was involved, the perpetrator was held more responsible for the incident than when alcohol was involved. Another significant effect had to do with the assignment of blame to the perpetrator as a function of deception versus no deception. So this is saying that when deception was used, the perpetrator was blamed more for the incident than when no deception was used. We also found an interaction, and we found this interaction between the 
age of the victim and deception versus no deception when assigning responsibility to the perpetrator. When the victim was 15 years old and deception was used, the perpetrator was held more responsible. However, when the victim was 21 years old and no deception was used, the perpetrator was held more responsible. We think that this occurred because deception on a 15-year-old seems particularly more onerous. Alexandria already went over hypotheses, but we want to look at them again, and we want to see what was contradicted, supported, and not supported. So the first hypothesis, when the victim is 21 years old, she will receive more blame for the sexual assault than when she is 15 years old. And this was contradicted because we actually found the opposite, that when the victim was 15 years old, she was blamed more. And we feel that we found this because a 15-year-old is only in high school, so she shouldn't be at a college party to begin with. The second hypothesis had to do when the victim is 21 years old, she experienced more self-blame over the incident than when she is 15 years old. And, when, and again, that this is contradicted because we actually found when the victim was 15 years old, she experienced more self-blame. And again, we feel that we found this finding for the same exact reason, that she's a high school student and she shouldn't be at a college party. Another hypothesis is that when the perpetrator will be held more responsible for their sexual assault when alcohol has been consumed rather than marijuana is consumed. And once again, this hypothesis was contradicted because we actually found the opposite, that the perpetrator was held more responsible when marijuana was involved rather than alcohol. And we feel that we found this finding because marijuana is an illegal drug no matter what age you are. Whether you're 15 years old or 21 years old, it's illegal, so John shouldn't have had possession of marijuana to begin with. And our last hypothesis stated that the perpetrator will be blamed more for the act if there is deception than when no deception is used. And this hypothesis was supported, and we feel that we found this because deception is a form of trickery. So if the perpetrator went out of his way to trick the victim, it was intentional and it was thought out. From our study, we found some very interesting results, many of which were unanticipated. However, our study did contain some limitations. Two of our limitations had to do with sampling issues. One is that there was an unequal number of male and female participants. We had 17 male participants versus 80 female participants. Another is that all our participants were college students. And our last limitation had to do with our scenario. We were unclear with all the scenarios whether John was intoxicated or high along with Susan. For future research, we suggest implementing some changes to see if the results would differ. One would be to vary the age of the perpetrator. In our study, the age of the perpetrator was always 21. We suggest maybe varying the age from 20 to maybe 40 to 60 years old to see if the results would differ. Another suggestion is to vary the setting. In our study, the setting was always at a college party, and we wonder if we put John and Susan, set them up on a date either to a restaurant or a movie, if that would give us different results as well. And the last thing that we suggest has to do with background information of the participants. In our study, we asked the participants if they were male and female, and that was it. But we suggest asking them if they've ever been a victim of a sexual assault, because we wonder if, if we did have participants that were victims of a sexual assault, if that varied the responses, and if they automatically blamed the perpetrator regardless of the variables that were in their scenario. Overall, we found some significant findings, and we just wanted to thank everyone for watching.